So to start, I'm going to cut this into a slightly smaller section, just so it's easier to work with. And let's see, I think that'll fit nicely about right there. So all I'll do is just put some hot glue onto this piece of window screen foam. What I like to do is do the edges like that. And then where I'm going to put it down, I'll put some in the middle on these pieces of cardboard because you can't put it in the middle on the sheet because a lot of it will go in these gaps so you'll be wasting glue. So I just put it on the cardboard sheets that will be covered. Just like that. And then while the glue is hot, just lay it down like that. Be careful because this glue gets really hot. You don't want to burn yourself. I have burned myself many a time on this stuff. Just like that. And then we'll just keep going. There's another piece right here. I can see that it's going to have to fit around the top of this tunnel portal. So I'll just cut a little notch like that. And that should help it fit around there. And if there's gaps, you know, don't worry, we can fill those in later with scrap pieces of window screen foam. So I think that'll fit over nicely like that. So again, I'll just do the edges. And then I'll put some on the actual cardboard strips. Like that. And you can kind of bend this to whatever shape you want so that it starts to kind of assume the shape of a hill or a cliff or whatever you're making. Like that. And there's a little gap here between these two sheets, so I'll go ahead and fill that in. I'll just cut a little section here. A lot of times what I'll do on these top sections is I'll cut the end that's going to be on the top of the wood a little irregular so it's not a straight line. And that'll help later when we're putting scenery down on top. You won't have to hide that straight line as much. And I'll just stick that right there. You see I can push down on it and shape it further. And in about 10 or 15 minutes, this will harden into this shape. So that's what we're going to do for this entire area. We're just going to continue to cover this cardboard lattice with this window screen foam. On this part of the cardboard lattice, I want to show you a little trick before I put the foam on here. Let's say you've got the cardboard lattice and you want to add a little more flair to this area. You think it looks a little boring. So before you put on the foam, what I'll do is I'll take some of that pink insulating foam, just a little scrap like this, and sort of do like that on the cardboard lattice. So now when I put on this foam, now it's got, it's got more of a exciting surface to it. It's, it's, it's coming out a little bit more. And I'll do that a lot of times if I think the cardboard lattice is a little more boring than I'd like it to be. I'll just stick a piece of insulating foam in there and that makes it bulge out a little more and gives the surface a little more excitement. Alright, as you can see I finished putting on all of the hard shell 
and it has cured completely so it's nice and hard and very strong. If you look over here you'll notice that I did not put hard shell where this pink foam is and that's simply because it's not necessary. The pink foam is strong enough the way it is so putting hard shell over it is just overkill. So with the hard shell complete the next step is going to be to put some rocks on top of the hard shell. To make our rocks we're going to use the exact same process we used when we made the rocks for the tunnel. We're going to use the polyurethane foam along with the white plastic casting resin and those nice rock molds from Bragdon Enterprises and we'll make our rocks and then secure them to the hard shell using a hot glue gun. This is one of the latex rock molds that you can get from Bragdon Enterprises. You can get to their website at www.bragdonant.com. This particular one is the number 45. And if you remember from the tunnel video, I recommended using the numbers 4, 15, and 45 when doing the interior of the tunnel because those rock molds are fairly bland, they're fairly generic and not very exciting, and that does well on the inside of a tunnel where you don't want some big outcropping of rock interfering with the motion of the trains. But when it comes to the outside, you can use rock molds that are a lot more exciting. You can certainly use these ones if you still have them. I do. But you can also use stuff like this. This is the number 130 from Bragdon. And this is a little more exciting. It's got a lot more depth to the mold. And so this one, for example, looks really nice when put on a vertical surface like that. So go to Bragdon's website and look at their rock molds. They've got about 130 or so rock molds to choose from and just choose some rock molds that you think will look good on the exterior of your layout. Now I don't want to sound like a broken record but for the next part of this project where we put the rock onto the hard shell it is imperative that you have watched the tunnel video because in the tunnel video I spent about 20 minutes showing you how to prep these rock molds how to cast them and then how to pull the rocks out of the molds and I'm not going to go through all that again in this video so do yourself a favor, if you haven't watched the tunnel video, watch it. You can get to that video by clicking on the link that's popping up on the screen right now. So, I've already prepped this rock mold. I'm going to go ahead and cast it. I'll be back in a second and we'll attach the rocks to the hard shell. Okay, here's a piece of rock that I just pulled out of a mold. It's still soft so it hasn't quite set up yet. So it's ready to go. So I've got a manageable size here and I'm just going to coat it with uh, hot glue. Putting this rock on the hard shell is very much like putting that rock on the interiors of the tunnels. And if you remember on that video I said that doing the rocks was like putting together a puzzle. You do big pieces first and then you sort of fill in the gaps with little scraps of rock. And doing the hard shell is the same. We're doing big pieces like this first, and then we'll do small pieces to fill in the gap. So I've got the hot glue on, so now I'm just going to press it up against the, the uh, hard shell. So I've got this large piece in, so now I'm going to fill in some of these gaps that are on the bottom and on the side. So here's some more of the rock and I'm just going to break off little pieces and again it's like putting together a puzzle I'm just breaking off little pieces and just sort of sticking them where they where they make sense okay as you can see I filled in the gaps on the side and the bottom I've added a little bit to the top and it's looking pretty good. So we're just going to keep on going all the way across here until we're done.